Welcome back to the Warbird Mistress. Today is Monday, the 13th of April, 1942. And before we begin, I also want to thank everyone who bought merchandise in the store, subscribes on Patreon, makes donations. Of course, everyone who comments, likes, and shares keeps the viewership up, especially those shares. Don't forget in your social media groups that if you like something, say something to your friends who might watch this. And also a special shout out to my top Patreon patrons and to those who have joined the channel here on YouTube at the Squadron Leader level. Remember that memberships only start at $1 per month, and everything really does help keep this going. So, let us commence with today, Monday the 13th of April, 1942, where we join the Caribbean 6th Air Force with the 27th Reconnaissance Squadron Heavy, 25th Bombardment Group Heavy. Flying ASW patrols out of Borinquen Field, Puerto Rico with B-18 Bolos, they send a detachment to Camahoya, Cuba, the detachment operates from Cuba until August of 43. Cuba was one of the first nations to declare war on the Axis following Pearl Harbor and was heavily and competently involved in cooperation with American and British forces in the struggle against the Kriegsmarine in the Caribbean and in the Gulf of Mexico. These bolos are the first of many American aircraft to operate out of Cuba. Moving across the globe to the South Pacific area with the 7th Air Force, following negotiations with the Netherlands, United Kingdom, Australia, and New Zealand, the military command known as the South Pacific Area is established, and Vice Admiral Robert L. Gormley is assigned as Commander-in-Chief South Pacific, COMSOPAC. Specifically, his command includes all base and local defense forces on the ground, in the air, and at sea, except for land defenses in the Dominion of New Zealand, which remain under the New Zealand Chiefs of Staff. He is to operate in the paradigm established by the strategic decision-making of the Commander-in-Chief of the United States Pacific Fleet, including aircraft assignments and fleet composition. The Elise and Gilbert Islands, the Phoenix Islands, including the Canton and Enderbury Islands Anglo-American Condominium, the Marquesas, Tuamotu, American Samoa and the New Zealand Trust Territory of Samoa, the Fiji Islands, the Anglo-French Condominium of nouvelle brite New Caledonia, and New Zealand are all part of this command at the time of its establishment. Note, however, that unlike Indochina, the French entities of Oceania were under free French, not Vichy, governance. They were not represented in the negotiations, but had been operating under the auspices of Australian military guidance as early as March of 1942, when the local Conseil General ejected pro-Vichy administrators, reasserted their position against the Axis, and even contributed troops to the Free French Force in North Africa, known as the Bataillon du Pacifique, an ironic name as it could also mean the Peaceful Battalion, but I digress. Regardless, this command will ensure collaboration in the air, on the waves, and on land, or whatever a coral and sand combination passes for land, in what the Allies hoped to be a more successful effort than the ABDA command had experienced in the Dutch East Indies. And now back to our regularly scheduled air war as we go to the 5th Air Force in the Southwest Pacific area. For the second day in a row, Australia-based B-25s hit targets in the Philippines by staging through the Del Monte airfield on Mindanao. The B-25s take off at midnight on the night of the 12th to the 13th to bomb shipping at Cebu and installations at Davao, which have been being put to use by the Japanese captors. Later today, the B-25s make a second strike, this time bombing the docks at Davao, to prevent further Japanese reinforcements and supplies from landing. These small, daring raids offer a foreshadowing of the Allied ability to improvise, adapt, and overcome, and offer cheerfulness in the face of adversity, as they put up a fight against overwhelming odds in even the darkest days and hardest-pressed situations. After all, these are just a handful of bombers operating out of a foreign dominion, flying from a single airstrip built for private commercial purposes, against targets in enemy-occupied territory, where only tiny pockets of hundreds of troops one besieged harbor island, and the various resistance movements shined their lanterns against tens of thousands of Nipponese invaders, Filipino quislings and opportunists of the soon-to-be-established Galibapi and Second Republic, and even a variety of Mohammedan rebels equally anti-American, anti-Manila, and anti-Japanese, some of whom swarmed the very hills surrounding the solitary outpost of Allied resistance on the Del Monte Pineapple Plantation. All but forgotten in popular history where they are overshadowed by the earlier carrier raids, the Doolittle Raid, and the resistance on Bataan and Corregidor, but these pilots in their long and lonely missions against the horde of the rising sun endured 
is certainly the stuff of heroism and ingenuity. And finally we end on Tuesday, the 14th of April, 1942. A quieter day, but one on which the Allied path for the war will be hewn out of the jungle of confusion and the desperate need for cooperation against common enemies. As in London today, His Majesty's Government and the Imperial Chiefs of Staff accept General George C. Marshall's plan for the build-up of American forces in Britain, known as Operation Bolero, as the Americans work to combine their efforts with those of the British, Imperial, Commonwealth, and Free Forces, already in the assault against Germany and her allies. And that was Monday the 13th of April and Tuesday the 14th of April, 1942. Thank you once again for tuning in. Be sure to like, subscribe, share, comment, and all the rest. And as I mentioned before, you can join the channel for as little as $1 a month. Just be sure to hit that button down there, and I will see you the next time on A Walk Through the War. Until then, this is Claire, and I am the Warbird Mistress. Take care.